Ray, you're a scientist by training, a distinguished physician, neurologist, gerontologist, um, uh, but in your philosophical writings, you exercise science. You take science to task. Why? I think there needs to be a corrective to recognize the limitations of science in explaining us. So I want to preface everything I say by saying thank you, science, for the increased life expectancy, health expectancy, fun expectancy, comfort expectancy, and so on, all of those things. And also for our great cognitive expansion that enables us to you know, look into the stars and see things beyond any possible gaze. So that's what science has delivered. But how has it delivered it? It's travel fast because it's travel light. And how has it travel light? Basically, it has excluded many, many things from its gaze. Not just the obvious things like values and meaning and so on, but mm. much less obvious, but much more profound things. Qualities. Science is about qualities. Science inescapably reduces the world to a system of magnitudes. Some people feel as a result of our scientific inquiries, we indeed should see the world as simply, purely, as it were, a mathematical crystal. But that's an inevitable consequence of what science does in order to achieve what it has achieved which is basically reducing things to quantities. So what you're saying then is that by limiting what goes into science as those things that are susceptible to scientific method, it leaves out things which are fundamental to understanding what we are or reality. Science would say quite the opposite, that, that things are left out which are vague and uncertain and cannot be determined. And therefore, if you allow those in, it would muddy up science and it would, it, it would destroy the capacity of science to do its work. Supposing we reduce color to different wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation. That's very handy for doing all the things you and I know electronically. But it doesn't in any way disprove the reality of color. So what science does is, as it were, exsanguinate the real lived world. And it goes deeper than that. Take the notion of the observer, and Schrodinger made this point. He said science has advanced by basically displacing and eventually erasing the observer. But of course, you cannot have science without an observer. Einstein's relativity theory emphasizes apparently the central role of the observer, but the observer has been erased from his theory. You somehow have coordinate systems that seem to descend from nowhere, acting as those things that determine where something is, what something is, and so on. We have blizzards of coordinates, blizzards of axes that arrive from nowhere because science, in the end, doesn't do without the observer, but just sort of tucks him or her away. The difference in science is that science is cross-culturally, cross-generationally -generation, communicated, and that we could have been brought up any place on Earth at any time. If we see the same information, we'll agree on, on what that means. Everything else we're talking about in terms of values, experience, uh, uh, all these qualities are individually determined, socially determined, culturally determined, and there's no way we could communicate those. And so those are looked upon as, um, as, as cultural um, enhancements or, or derivative from the fundamental science in ways that we, we don't know. And if we, if we allowed that in at the beginning, it would so destroy the capacity of science to do anything. I'm not sure that's true. Take colour. Of course, the way we may classify and structure our colour schemes will vary to some extent uh, from culture to culture, although there do seem to be some universals there. But the experience of colour is absolutely universal. Think about pain. You know, if you pinch my leg, I feel pain. Mm -hmm. If you pinch the leg of a person from a totally different culture, they will feel pain. How they interpret the pain, how they interpret the gesture, that's different. So these are absolutely fundamental components cross-cultural fundamental components of human life. Th th that's certainly uh, derived from the nature of human experience and, and consciousness. And consciousness is admittedly by science a very uh, a difficult area to deal with. But science in general tries to deal with those things which are um, uh, the, 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 the nature of atoms, the nature of the uh, galaxies, where the, there are, they are not inhabited by these kinds of, of, of consciousness-related activities. So everything you're talking about is this area of consciousness. And I think you and I would really agree that consciousness is a, is a major area of existence that needs to be understood. But if you put that aside, 
uh, then science is perhaps properly uh, bereft of all these other quantities, which sort of are subsets of consciousness, which we recognize as we don't know how to deal with. Let's go beyond consciousness to what we might call folk ontology, the kind of things that we think inhabit or populate our world, say physical objects. Now science has obviously transformed our understanding of physical objects. In fact, physical objects dissolve before <laughs> our gaze in science. <laughs> but the truth remains that there is a cross-cultural reality to physical objects, cups mm -hmm. and boulders mm -hmm. and bows and arrows or whatever you like. All of those things are cross-cultural realities that are inescapable part of the life of any human being and probably of some animal beings as well. Mm. Okay, uh, and, and, and therefore, though, d does that, the fact that science doesn't deal with that, is that good or bad? In other words, um, you're, you're isolating parts of the world that science doesn't deal with. You're not saying science should deal with that, right? Uh, absolutely, and it shouldn't pretend, as it were, to have, got, to have superseded those things. So if, according to my science, the entire universe is a single wave function and so on, <laughs> and that objects like chairs and tables and you and me are illusions, then I think science is actually going beyond its pay grade. Mm. It's when science makes meta draws metaphysical conclusions from its inquiries that then I start crying foul. <laughs>